In, in general terms, what happens inside our body when we're taking a prescription drug? Um, what do those drugs do? I mean, just in general terms again. And then expand on that. What happens when we're on three drugs or five drugs sure. or more? Well, I'll, I'll explain. I'm a physiologist. My master's degree uh, is in physiology, but I'm not a pharmacologist. So I'm going to tell you how the body works, and I'll tell you where some drugs target, but I don't want to pretend I have expertise in an area I don't. Well, let's just use something, the mo one of the most common prescribed drugs, which would be a, a, a blood pressure drug. Sure. So uh, many of the blood pressure uh, medications are angiotensin-converting uh, enzyme inhibitors. ACE inhibitors. So what they do is they block a, the conversion of angio uh, of a of, of basically a, a hormone that is converted at your lungs, and they and they stop that. So what really the 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 the, the concept of a drug is that it's a toxin that's given in a non-lethal dose. Literally, you could look that up. That's what it is. So if so, what these drugs do is they deliberately inhibit the ability of the of your organ of self-regulation, meaning your subconscious brain. It blocks the ability of your brain to do its job. So here's what your organ of self-regulation does. It's constantly scanning your external environment for, to, to, to detect environmental demand. It's constantly scanning your internal environment to measure where you are in terms of your state of physiology. If your external demand goes up, it will it change your physiology to match it. If I put you on a treadmill, your blood pressure will go up. If I put you under chronic stress, if I put you on the treadmill of life, you have a job you don't like, you drive in traffic every day, you, you eat you know, unhealthy foods, you, you, you don't exercise, you get it. So if, you, if, if that demand goes up, your organ of self-regulation will recognize that demand or stressor and it will respond to it by increasing your blood pressure to match that demand. Usually it does that by what I call shoveling coal into the furnace, which is releasing more stress hormones, cortisol, catecholamines. So the demand goes up, your subconscious brain recognizes that. It increases the, 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 the hormones that are required, that autonomic shift required to increase your blood pressure to meet that demand. But this is what they call normal. But what they call normal is based on a normal environment. The best example to think about that is, imagine if I was a medical doctor and I had an assistant measure Mary's blood pressure. And my assistant came back and said, you know, Dr. Chestnut, the Mary's blood pressure is 140 over a hundred and you know obviously that's high and I would prescribe a medication I might take it a couple times but generally you're gonna get a medication right the Framingham chart would say give a medication but imagine two months later you know my assistant Mary uh, or my assistant comes back and says you know I don't know if this is relevant dr. Chestnut but when I took Mary's blood pressure she was on the treadmill and it was at five miles an hour at a three percent grade would that matter and what would my answer be of course Right. So in other words, we know that, it, that the demand that's being placed on an individual, the habitat that they're in, the stressors that they're exposed to, have a huge um, impact on what we would call normal in terms of the physiology. But all the norms that are used are based on an absolutely, basically homeostatic or stress-free environment. But it's not normal to have 120 over 80 blood pressure if you're in an environment where you don't exercise and you eat you know, very unhealthy foods or a tiger's chasing you or whatever you want to call the stressor. That's not normal. So here's what drugs do. Drugs will lower that blood pressure because they block the ability of your subconscious brain to regulate your physiology to match the environmental demand. They block it. But what they don't do is block the ability of your subconscious brain, your organ of self-regulation, to detect environmental demand. So the environmental demand stages, remember when they give you the drug, they don't ask if you're on the treadmill of life. They don't, they don't do any of those things. So the demand stays, the drug comes in, blocks your ability to self-regulate, so now you lower your blood pressure. But your brain detects that it's too low for environmental demand. So what does it do? It releases more of the, uh, it shovels more coal into the furnace, releases more of those hormones, autonomic shift, and you try to raise that blood pressure to match demand, but you can't. You've got a ceiling there called a drug. But as you release all those hormones, what happens to your cholesterol levels that are also affected by stress hormones? They start to go up. This is why you get that drug cascade where you, when you go on one medication, you're very likely go on, uh, go on many more medications, right? It's because we're never addressing the cause. The cause stays, right? This adaptation was intelligent and appropriate, but we lower it with a drug. Now we're detecting a gap, so we shovel coal into that furnace, but it can't come up. And so drugs are an enormous problem. In fact, in the American Journal of Family Medicine in 2012, uh, uh, Hunt was the lead author, fourth leading cause of death in America is properly prescribed drugs. Why? Because it's a disaster. 
they're not suffering from a deficiency of drugs. They're suffering from unhealthy lifestyle choices. 